Scripture. There is civil government and there is ecclesiastical government. What is ecclesiastical? What does that mean? It means church, the assembly. Uh, and so there are two forms of government. And they're not to mingle. They're not to be the same. Uh, they, but uh, God ordained both of them. And they have specific duties and responsibilities in the earth. And uh, it is where we, we come together and hear about the victory we have in the blood of Jesus. Amen. And hopefully you're saved and know Jesus Christ and you've washed and washed in the blood of the Lamb. And uh, you, uh, you called upon him to be your Lord and Savior. And that is so uh, important. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, our second president, uh, said that life and liberty go together. Life and liberty go together. The light of the gospel and liberty that we have, they go together. Uh, the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Without the Spirit of the Lord, there is no liberty. Uh, we don't have liberty unless there is uh, light of the gospel. Uh, we don't even know what liberty is. We are enslaved. We're going to learn also through this message. Uh, we are enslaved by sin and we are enslaved by man. And uh, government can enslave us, men can enslave us, and sin enslaves us. And we need to be liberated from the, the both tyrants uh, in our lives and have to understand that. Thomas Jefferson also said in a final letter to John Adams, before he and Adams both died on July 4th, uh, 1826, uh, Jefferson predicted that no death that uh, guards liberty. Uh, a, a, a fierce proponent of individual rights, Jefferson said, these are his exact words, the flames kindled on the 4th of July, 1776, have spread over too much of the globe to be extinguished by the feeble engines of despotism. What is despotism? It is a tyrannical monarch uh, uh, where a government uh, rules with an iron fist over the people and enslave them. On the contrary, they will consume these engines and all who work them. Now let me ask you a quick, quick, quick question here. Was Jefferson's prediction right? Jefferson's prediction was, where do we see our nation going? Where do we see liberty going around the globe? It, it is, it is, that light is being put out. It's being extinguished. It, it, it is being consumed. Uh, Jefferson was one of the earliest and most influential proponents of smallpox inoculation all the way back there at the founding of our country. Now, these are the words of uh, Barbara Lowe Fisher. She is the uh, founder of National Vaccine Information Center. And uh, she says that uh, he was the most influential proponent of smallpox inoculation. He, he promoted it and supported it. Could he never have imagined that the scientific and medical profession he loved so well would one day force lucrative global business partnership with industry and government and create a public health empire that has become a much greater threat to liberty than the monarchy he and his fellow revolutionaries rebelled against in 1776. Hear those words? What we're, we, we, we may be going, we're, we're, we, are, we are going back into the Dark Ages. What is the Dark Ages? From 500 A.D. to 1500 A.D. It was a thousand year reign uh, of, uh, of, of terror uh, uh, by a uh, a perverted and a an apostate church, and the Bible was outlawed. You outlaw the Bible, and 
What do people do? They go into darkness. This is our source of liberty. This is our source of knowing and understanding the victory we have in Jesus and his blood. The Bible is that source. And you bury the Bible. You tell the children they can't read the Bible. And what kind of nation do you get? You get a nation that we have today. Going rapidly into hell. Pouring rapidly into hell. And in, in, in total confusion. Total, to, come on. It is totally confusing when a child doesn't know if he's a male or a female. That's total confusion. That's total disruption of the norm. Overthrowing the, the, the foundation that God created, man and woman. And he created them in his image. And, and uh, uh, they, they were to procreate and reproduce and uh, 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 do, uh, dominate the earth and have dominion over the earth and reproduce and multiply. And, and so uh, we, we've fallen asleep and that is what this lesson, this, this message is all about. It is about um, uh, the, the warning our forefathers saw and warning us of what was coming, up, coming down. Once they signed that Declaration of Independence, and I gave you the Declaration of Independence back in, the, in July, on 4th of July, around 4th of July, uh, once they put their, their stamp, their signature on that document, all the forces of hell have come out against America, against the gospel, against the, uh, the furtherance of the church, the independent church, uh, against our constitution, and they have been working overtime. Uh, right from the get-go, all the forces of hell, all the despots of, of the world, all the wicked of the world polluted together to try to tear this nation down. Uh, we, we learned in your notes there uh, on the first page why government. Government was ordained by the Lord after the great deluge, after the flood of Noah's day, as a necessity to bind mankind to civility. Why? Okay, first of all, it says, in scriptures right here is where God ordained government. Genesis 9, 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for the image of God made man. Okay? Who was going to administer this commandment? Who was going to exercise this responsibility? Uh, if God is giving it to man. He's introducing it to man. So man has to form a delegation of men of, of, of uh, authority uh, to have power to adjudicate a murder trial. And to put all the case, all the facts together, bring forth all the evidence, uh, uh, apprehend the murderer, and uh, if he is found guilty, he must be executed, and somebody has to do that. That was the foundation of government. We're at the point in our culture, in our society today, is violence is running rampant because what? They're not doing this. They're not doing this. Thankfully for the the sheriff and the police department in, uh, in uh, New Mexico, uh, they're not upholding the dictate, the, uh, the, the rule uh, uh, according to the governor to prohibit anybody from carrying, honest citizens from carrying a gun to protect themselves. They're not, they're not waiving uh, the Second Amendment, the sheriff said. They're not going to take anybody's guns away from them. Uh, she wants, she's a despot. She's a despot. That's what a despot is. 
take away the people's right to defend themselves and then strip them of all their rights and enslave them and allow them to be murdered, allow the murderers to walk the street. And that's what's happening in all these liberal, woke cities all across this country. Because they're not exercising this right here, where God said, who so, who so sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for the image of God made he man. Execute the murderer. And you know what? Because we would learn to love one another and not blow a few, not drink and drive, and and kill somebody, and because we don't want to be executed, right? You don't want to have a noose hung around your neck and hung from a tree or decapitated with a with a uh, guillotine. Or put the poison in your veins so you die uh, uh, almost instantly? No, it's amazing how how everybody straightens up. You punish the evildoer, and everybody toes the line. Everybody toes the line. We we know that the earth was filled with violence, filled with violence. Now, we're not going to go over everything under Roman number one in your notes, because we did, dealt with that uh, before last week. But Genesis 6, 5, it says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Do you think he looks down upon the earth today and says the same thing? Only evil continued. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And you know what? Because man couldn't get his passions under control, because man couldn't get his, his behavior under control, God took command and executed everybody, except for Noah. He executed everybody. It grieved God that he made man. He was grieved in his heart because his creation, his, the, his, the, the, the pinnacle of his creation made in his image had gotten so wicked and vile in the earth. And God decided that he was going to execute his judgment upon the earth. But that doesn't stop man. Man doesn't learn very quickly. He forgets very quickly. Roman numeral 2 in your uh, notes there. Uh, U.S. Declaration of Independence. We are 247 years since those words were drafted and signed by Thomas Jefferson and the others who signed it. Uh, uh, one preacher signed it, uh, Witherspoon, um, here on the famous picture uh, of them signing the Declaration of Independence, John Witherspoon was the only preacher, a clergyman, uh, that signed that document, the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creators with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just power for the consent of the governed. We have learned that God ordained in, 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 uh, the institution of government, and it is also an ordinance of man to establish the form of government they want to be ruled under. A monarchy, uh, a parliamentary type of system, a republic like we have in our country, uh, or, or some kind of mixture uh, of the uh, of all the above. And so uh, man has to institute the type of government. God left it up to man to form a government to execute, uh, to be the judge in the earth and to execute uh, uh, 
uh, judgment in the nation, in the body of people, in the society that the government is over, uh, to uh, keep the peace. That is their responsibility. Uh, we looked at uh, our, our uh, we opened our notes. Uh, the top of the beginning of your notes take goes to Hebrews, uh, excuse me, Romans 13. And Romans 13, one of the most important chapters on government, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Okay? Not to the governing powers, not to the government, as some Bible says, but to the higher powers. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. That means King Charles in England is subject to a higher power. Who is the highest? The Lord, the one we sang about today, that's the highest. He's subject to him. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. There are higher powers than him. And God knows that they think they're, they have divine uh, right of kings or they are divine uh, as the Caesars of old thought they were divine, they were gods and that the uh, people had to bow down to them and whatever they decreed uh, was, uh, uh, they, was, was right in their own eyes. Every man did that which is right in his own eyes, the Bible says. But the Bible says, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. And so that is an important chapter. We've, we've looked at that last week. Which, and then we also see the chapter... In First Peter, where it says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. Now, ordinance man there doesn't mean every little law that, God, that the legislature passes. Okay? If there's an unsound law, we have the right to oppose it, to resist it, to take it to court and, uh, and get it overturned. But it's submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. This territory that we live in here, and Ohio and Michigan, was known as what? From your history books, what was this territory before it became a state was known as what? Indian Territory. Indian, territory. Indian Territory, Indiana? Indiana. Indiana Territory. Wasn't this called the Northwest Ordinance? The Northwest Ordinance, am I correct? This was known, these territories were called the Northwest Ordinance. Ordinance there in the scriptures, ordinance didn't mean like every little statute under the, the license bureau. It means a system of law. Our Constitution set up a system of law and a body of government. And that's what the Northwest Ordinance did. It set up the the uh, the body of law for these territories before they became states, and it it, it set up it, it said oh after so many square miles you were supposed to have a school in the center of a community, and uh, so an ordinance is like the constitution. It, it, it is a law system, a system of law, uh, the system of government for that. Uh, that territory. Uh, so submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Here's the answer. Whether it be to the king, okay, that type of mon a monarchy as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. Okay, governors. Some, some have governors. Uh, we, we have governors in each state uh, that we, we have to uh, abide by. And for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free and not using your liberty for the cloak of maliciousness. But as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. And, and those are the commandments that we are, we are to abide by. I, I've taught you before, lex rex and rex lex, Latin phrase. 
uh, uh, the, there was a book called Lex Rex written by Samuel Rutherford. He was a Scottish Presbyterian minister. Um, early on, our forefathers, the founding fathers of this country, read his work. What was Lex Rex? It was Latin for the law is king. Rex Lex meant the king is law. And what Samuel Rutherford was saying is, no, the law is king. This is the law of God. It is king. We, it's this, and man sets up a law system. It is king. That the law is king and not even the politicians can over, overshadow those laws. And, and, uh, uh, we, what we're learning today in our day and age in which we uh, live in our country, we're seeing a two-tier justice system, right? We, we hear that phrase quite used quite often. One party gets thrown in jail, and the crooked criminal party stays out of jail because they, 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 they stack the courts. They stack the legal process. And, and so we, we're seeing that anarchy taking place. And, and so Lex Rex is important. The law is reigns. It is king. The law is king. And, and the ultimate king, of course, we know is, uh, the, the, uh, the word of God being the law, being the law that we are to, uh, 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 stand on and our great, uh, commission our great commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, right? And then to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so we're to love one another. And, and that is the same with the politician. That goes all the way up to the president, to the House Speaker of the House, to the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, they're supposed to be abiding by the law of God. And so uh, those are important. Uh, we, we ended last week. Turn your Bibles to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Last week we ended. Well, that was just a review. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which... While some covet after, they have erred after the faith, or for, erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness. That's what God is telling us. As a righteous nation, this is what the, the a Christian nation, this is what we should follow after. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickened all things before Christ Jesus, and who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his time he will show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And if you're like me, I'm sure you can't wait until God takes control of the earth again. That we see him and he rules the earth, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto. 
Okay? Who no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. And, and what is what do we see the ungodly do? They strive to suck the American people dry and the people of the earth dry of their wealth in their power. Rulers suck the American people dry. Take their wealth. Take their property. Take their dignity. Take their humility away from them. Unbridled liberty, true or false, does it exist? You know, the Bible says righteousness exalteth a nation. That's what we just read here in Timothy. Righteousness exalted a nation. God had brought this nation into existence because of righteousness, because of godliness, because people attended church, because people lived for the Lord. They lived righteous. They were holy. Righteousness exalteth a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. All the wickedness and sin that we see in the earth today, we grieve, we mourn. Do reason. Roman numeral 3 in your notes, first bullet point. Do reason. And we're reading from uh, Samuel Morris and Sidney Morris, his brother, wrote this uh, in an article, in a series of articles called The Present Attempt to Dissolve the American Union, a British Arist Arist uh, Aristocratic Plot, 1862. Do reason and common sense sanction the allowance of unqualified individual liberty to every human being? Okay? Do we have liberty to do whatever we want? No. Is... The child allowed unrestricted liberty. That every child that comes into the world is and must of necessity be under restraint. That instead of being born into liberty, he is born into slavery. Every child, okay? In, in, in the, just look at things naturally. It is in fact a rule without an exception. Slavery, the subjection of one's will to the will of another since the fall of man is the rule and not liberty. I speak of a fact so notorious that the fool and the beast alone will ignore it. These great facts, this great fact that slavery since the fall is the moral condition of all mankind. Listen to that. This great fact that slavery, since the fall, is the normal condition of all mankind, lies at the basis of all government, and is recognized in the laws of every civilized nation on the globe. If the law restrains a child's liberty and forbids his doing certain acts until he is of age, is he not a slave to the extent of his privilege? Uh, uh, privation of liberty until he is of age. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Uh, it tells us also in Galatians, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. For, brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Now that liberty there is liberty from sin. You've been liberated from the, the, the bondage of sin, uh, but uh, don't use that, uh, that liberty as an occasion to the flesh, but love and serve one another. So we have a certain extent of liberty. Uh, we, we learn here from Morris also, he says, the simple fact that the Bible not merely sanctions but enjoins subjections to authority. The simple fact that the Bible not merely sanctions but enjoins subjection to authority. Submit to the ordinance of man, we read in Peter. 
would it of itself be sufficient to compel our assent or approval or agreement, even if the reason of the demand were not apparent, but in, but in this case the reason is obvious at a glance. Man, since the fall, is corrupt and selfish being. Man, since the fall, is a corrupt and selfish being, sensual, devoid of holiness, low and debased in his appetite, and by nature fit only for destruction, and aside from God's merciful interference, or in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, interference, yeah, that's correct, that's the right word, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm looking at for another word, but that, yeah, that's right. Interference. Hopelessly lost. So if God didn't intercede, we are hopelessly lost. That's the word I was looking at, intercede. Can such beings live together in society with their discordant or contradictory repellent propensities? Repellent means disgusting, revolting propensities and fierce desires in unregulated, perpetual antagonism means we can't live with our wicked nature, nature. We could not live together. Because of all the contradictory uh, propensities of our lives and disgusting and revolting things uh, we as sinners uh, desire, uh, we could not live amongst ourselves, and that's what creates and generates violence. We would be gang. What what controls Chicago and New York City? Gang. That's how they live and survive. A young man can't, can't grow up in those cities without joining a gang. Because he'll just be killed, beaten, uh, it, it's almost impossible for a young man in some of those areas of, of those cities uh, growing up to live without joining a gang. Because that's, that is what the, our government has allowed to take place. To the un, unassisted human reason, a benevolent solution to this question seems impossible. To unassisted human reason, a benevolent solution to this question seems impossible. No. You know what the Democratic Party says? We want more of your money. We'll solve it by taking more of your money. Hire more police. We'll hire more, we'll build more jails. Has that done anything for this country, those cities? But God's wisdom in the great plan of redeeming fallen man has devised and ordained government. Or the rule of the superior over the inferior as one of his benevolent means for accomplishing that great end and has given a code divinely regulated to prevent the abuse of power. While its use is made a means of the greatest good. He has placed man, wherever born, under some system of tutelage. From the cradle to the grave, he has established a disciplinary scheme to train man by physical restraint to obedience and submission to law and to the more elevated control of spiritual restraint. And thus, by a system of redemption devised in the of heaven in which the end is man's salvation from the slavery of sin, man's terrestrial slavery, that means slavery here on earth in our physical body, is made one of the wisely appointed means for giving him celestial and eternal liberty, not the groveling, earth-born, earth-bound liberty claimed as an inalienable right, but the glorious spiritual liberty of the Son of God. And so, it, it, government is to lead us to Christ. If it is according to the Word of God. If government works according to the Word of God, 
and, uh, and, and is governed by the Word of God, government should lead us to Christ. Just as we lead our children to Christ by restraint and teach them to, uh, to honor uh, God and His holiness. Just as a child has, uh, has to be raised under a system of restraint to keep them alive, just as children have to be raised under a system of restraint to keep them alive, you don't let them run around and go run around in the street, do you? You don't let them run around the, pot, the pond, the, the water. So just as children have to be raised under a system of restraint to keep them alive so that they do not injure themselves or hurt others, so too their has to be an equitable system of law to restrain adults from injuring themselves or others and live peaceably and harmoniously with each other. Also, the system of law must restrain men who are granted limited authority to rule over men and from exercising abusive usurpation or usurped authority over their fellow man. Because of man's fallen state, he cannot attain authority without abusing it, because it is within his sinful nature to do so. We have seen governor after governor after governor exercising uh, uh, emergency powers that have allowed power and authority to go to their head and... Uh, uh, and lacking common sense because they were not controlled by the restraints of the uh, Senate and the Assembly uh, uh, and that you didn't have that balance of power. And so, uh, he, man is like a wild, or a government, government official is like a wild stallion that must be bridled and harnessed in order not to hurt himself or the writer, or others around him. Isaac Backus. I told you about Isaac Backus last week. Uh, he was known as the father, modern-day uh, apostle of liberty, and uh, wrote extensively about religious liberty. He says, The true liberty of man is to know, obey, and enjoy his Creator and to do all the good unto and enjoy all the happiness, happiness with and in his fellow creatures that he is capable in order to which the law of love was written in his heart. You read that, go back and read that, Romans 13.10. Which carries in its nature union and benevolence to being human beings in general, and to each being, human being in particular, according to its nature and excellency, and to its relation and connection to, and I spelled connection the way they spelt, he spelt it 200 plus years ago, uh, to its relation and connection to and with the supreme being and ourselves. Each rational soul, as he is a part of the whole system of rational being, so it was and is both his duty and his liberty to regard the good of the whole in all his actions. That's loving your neighbor as yourself. To love yourselves and truly to seek our own welfare is both our liberty and our indispensable duty. But the conceit that man could advance either his honor or happiness by disobedience instead of obedience has, was first injected by the father of lies, and all such conceit ever since are as false as he is. And so government is to reign in man and keep violence down in the earth. We're not seeing that. So something's missing, right, in our country? Now, these men wrote extensively. Political sermons of the American founding era. Uh, this, these are all the, these, these are many of the revolutionary 
chaplains, the chaplains and clergy of the revolutionary period. Uh, uh, these men guided men who were in political positions. Not only the lay person, not only the, the farmer and, and the blacksmith, but they, they governed and, and the politicians listened to them. What saith the Lord about government? We, I, just reading Isaac Backus alone in this book, takes hours of just trying to comprehend the depth of their understanding of liberty. The depth. I, I don't, don't think I've read through this whole book. I have not read through this whole book. I've read segments, certain men. But you have to read it over again, read the paragraph over again. What, it, what are they trying to say? And these are sermons. These were sermons that people listened to. It says there in Ecclesiastes, well, let's just go before there in Ecclesiastes, despotism is the only result, resultant of an immoral, godless, communal society of people. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Uh, the, the second U.S. President, John Adams, made that quote. That's a quote from him. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. You take prayer, Bible, the name of Christ out of the school system, what do you think you're going to get? Exactly what we hear on the news every day. It, this, this, uh, our Constitution has been eroded. Ecclesiastes 5.8, it says, If thou seest the oppression of the poor, and violent perverting of judgment, and justice in a providence, marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regard it, and there be higher than they. The, the Lord says, There be higher than they. Who is that highest? The highest. The holy God. Uh, our, our God is the highest. We, we worship the highest. Uh, the Lord God, the highest. And He is the uh, final authority over all authority. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the Holy One to the intent that the living may know that the Most High, there it is, the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basis of men. What does that mean, basis of men? What does that mean? The deplorable. God allows the rulers of the earth to be the most deplorable men and women on the face of the earth. The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basis of men. Deplorable. Now Hillary called MAGA deplorable. But she's the deplorable. And all her cohorts in crime there in the capital. They're the deplorable. The basis of men. That's what that means. The lowest denomination of a human being. They gravitate towards government. And Daniel didn't say that one time. Daniel printed that three times. The Lord said that three times to get his point across. He was specifically talking to Nebuchadnezzar, but that's for all of mankind. Proverbs 29, 27, you don't have this, but the unjust man is an abomination to the just. The unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Did you hear that? Let me say it again. The unjust man is an abomination to the just. What do we think of what's going on in politics today? It's an abomination, right? It's an abomination. Uh, what, what they're allowing to, to take place in our culture and our society. 
They, they allow the murder of the unborn in the womb. They allow the, 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 the flooding of this country with pornography and uh, uh, explicit material just pouring out by, by, like, a, like, uh, like a sieve into our culture. Uh, they're, they're allowing the violence and murder of one another on the streets, the flood of drugs into our country. They allowing those things. That's an abomination to the just. He that is upright in the way, he that says, I believe in uh, uh, pro-life, I believe in the life of that child, and that you shouldn't murder that child in the womb, that I oppose uh, legalization of marijuana or fentanyl or giving needles to drug addicts in, in New York City. I oppose those things. Uh, I oppose uh, the, the, the drunkenness that's taking place in our country and uh, the, the, the murder of innocent people on the roadway from a drunk driving down the road. I oppose those things. You're an abomination. I'm an abomination to the wicked. That's what that verse is saying, Proverbs 29, 27. He that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. Uh, in 2 Samuel 23, 3, The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, religious, Ruling in the fear of God. He that ruleth over men must be judged. Proverbs 29.2 When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. You mourn, I mourn every day for the wickedness that has taken over this country and has enslaved the human. You know, we, every one of us, Every one of you in this room. The Bible says, let me, let me get it for you. I'll get it right out. I'll get it out. The rich rule over the poor. And the borrower is servant to the lender. The borrower is servant to the lender. When our national debt is, can somebody tell me what that value is right now? $50, 50 trillion dollars on your back and my back, we're the slaves. We're the slaves. We're the slaves to those to, to the to those we're, we're, we've become the slave. The borrower is servant, slave to the lender. You borrow money, they own your property until you pay your mortgage off. You're, you're a slave. Isaac Backus said, Now, Providence, excuse me, Providence has given, this is from John Jay, excuse me, our first Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. I'm jumping, uh, I'm jumping ahead accidentally, but Providence has given to our people the choice of their rule. That means we have elections. We, we have the, 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 the democratic principle of electing our rule. And it is the duty as well as the privilege and interest of our Christian nation to select and prefer Christians for their ruler. For their ruler. That was Chief, First Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, John Jay. Now, Isaac Backett said, Now, how often have we been told that he is not a free man but a slave, whose person and goods are not at his own but another's disposal? And to have foreigners come and riot at our expense and in the fruit of our labors has often been presented to be worse than death. Those, those, they, they, the, these problems that we're experiencing today, they were experiencing over 250 years ago. And should the higher powers appear to deal with temporal 
oppressors according to their desert? Should the higher power appear to deal with temporal oppressors according to their desert? What does that mean, desert? It means recompense or just reward, their punishment. It would seem strange indeed if those who have suffered entirely, entirely by them should employ all their art and power to conceal them and to prevent their being brought to justice. But how is our world filled with such madness concerning spiritual power? How far have pride and infidelity and covetousness and luxury Yea, deceit and cruelty. So now he's marrying, he's saying that the bondage and the sin, that we're, we're slaves to sin. Our spiritual tyrants are these sins. These foreigners, which come from hell, carry their influence and spread their banful mischief in our world. Yet who is willing to own that he has been deceived and enslaved by them? Who is willing honestly to bring them forth to justice? All acknowledgement that these enemies are among us and may, com uh, may complain aloud of the mischief that they do, yet even those who lift their heads so high as to laugh at the atonement of Jesus and the powerful influences of the Spirit, slight public and private devotion, and at the same time very unwilling to own that they harbor pride, infidelity, and any other of those dreadful tyrants, the spiritual tyrants, these sins in our lives. Because we harbor these things and don't have holiness, then we have unholiness in the world. And that is what Isaac is trying to bring out here, Isaac Bacchus, is we need to get control of the spiritual tyrant in our lives in order to have uh, control of the civil tyrant and get them out of our life. Uh, and so order, control, holiness needs to be incorporated in our lives. Government is needed to control man of his sinful passions that enslave him worse than government itself. And so uh, that, that, is, that last sentence there, by, by Isaac Bacchus, that all nations have found it necessary to submit to some government in order to enjoy any liberty and security at all. And so, in, in order for us to, to exist in our culture and to have uh, order, we have to have holiness. And uh, holiness needs to be restored in the church but also all the people. And, and we need to shut down. Can you imagine a nation that says that pornography is free speech? And that started here in Indiana? That started here with, with uh, 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 the, the guy down there in IU who started that academy. I, name with my Kinsey, Alfred Kinsey, Alfred Kinsey. Yeah, I mean, and he was a zoologist. He he didn't know anything about the anatomy of man. He didn't have any biological, human biological studies, and uh, it started with him right after World War Two. And they legalized pornography. Look where we are today. Legalizing home, two men marrying them, marrying each other, or two women marrying each other. That's sick. Our society has gotten sick. It's perverse. Do you not think God is going to pour out his wrath upon this nation as he did Sodom and Gomorrah? First he has to take the lots and his family out. That's the rapture. But we need to get the spiritual tyrants out of our lives 
uh, because we're going to someday have to stand before the King of Kings, the righteous judge, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and so government is necessary. Righteous government, of course, is necessary. That's what God says. But he, but you, we need to put all kinds of restraints. Just as we need restraints around ourselves, we need to put restraints around children, we need to put restraints around government officials because they can so easily, because it's in each one of our sinful natures, we can abuse authority once we get it. Power. 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 Sometimes these men want more than money, they want power. Because it, it, they, they, can, they can crush people and take whatever they possess and uh, 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 just make people slaves to their whim. And so the importance here, title of the lesson here, is the um, government, liberty, unalienable rights. We learn our unalienable rights in our Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Uh, that these things are all intertwined. And everything under everything needs to be, have certain amount of restraint. And only a Christian culture, only a Christian society can exercise a, uh, the, the, the holiness in a nation and rule properly. And as I've said before, as I've said many a day, many a time, we, if we take God out of the school system, prayer out of the school system, the Holy Bible out of the school system, what kind of nation, if we're not going to train up our children in the things of the Lord, what kind of nation are we going to get? An atheistic nation. An atheistic nation, a nation that hates God and we're going to be ruled by despots. And that's what's happening. The, 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 and, and like I said, starting off, and, and Samuel, Morris, Samuel Morris said in his two books that the forces of hell around the globe started coming after America. All the governments, all the despots said we have to overthrow that. You know why? Because we made all those despots, all those tyrants, all those other forms of government look bad. Because we allowed the people to have liberty and freedom. And when their people, their peasants, looked at America and saw how well the American people were living, they wanted to rise up and overthrow their aristocracy, their royalty, their uh, despot kings and my, my, uh, tyrant and emperor. Uh, they wanted to overthrow them and live like America. You know, my mother told me that her dad went back to Sicily and uh, to visit family many, many moons ago. And the people were begging him for his clothes. The people, they wanted, they thought the, they thought the streets were paved with gold. They heard of all this glorious things in America. And how, I mean, this is in the early days before TV was, you know, many people had a TV. And they just heard these rumors, all oh, those Americans, they live so rich and so happy and free. And, and he had to bring extra clothes with him to give away. Because they, want, they wanted everything he had in his suitcase when he came over. And, and, they, they, and, and we, we were a blot on their wickedness in America. We were a light. And as, as I read that uh, Abraham uh, or Thomas Jefferson said, light and liberty go together. So we were a light to the world. Heavenly Father, we just come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
Lord, uh, we, we pray that uh, someday we know that you will come back and bring justice into the land.